Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave and welcome to this next entry within this psychological series. Today, we will be focusing on the news. Of course, the news, the good old meme of the news, which I've been making fun of quite recently. And I want to kind of explain in a video format why the whole intricacies of why news for the most part is just misleading and uh, kind of a fool's errand. However, before we get into that, we need to actually separate the differences between what is legitimately very important news pieces that are typically you know, fundamentally driven that actually change major, major drivers in the market versus the news that you might hear on on a forum like Reddit or perhaps it's crypto Twitter or perhaps it's coming from, you know, whatever social media venue that it might be or just even even from the team themselves purporting some sort of massive event, which turns out to be some sort of, you know, very misleading title. Anyways, with that said, first things first, what is legitimate news? What are things that are worth paying attention to in this whole game? And I've kind of nailed it down with the overarching factor of being fundamentally changing, fundamentally driving. So if you're familiar with traditional markets, this would come down to like an earnings report, a forwards outlook. Perhaps it's like a GDP. Perhaps it's like, you know, a payroll. Perhaps it's uh, unemployment rates. All these sorts of fundamental type things do move the market and they do matter. Of course, interest rates up there as well, uh, especially if you've been trading Forex or traditional markets. Uh, more recently, definitely running the market on those sorts of uh, economic data. But those sorts of big economic data pieces that drive the underlying fundamentals, those do matter. And then, of course, when it comes down to a specific name, an earnings report, these sorts of things do matter as well. And, and you know, in the case of, uh, for example, if we're talking about like a biotech, they might be having some sort of like tr drug trials. Those sorts of things matter because it is tangible. It actually does change the fundamentals of that company or perhaps the market at, at large. And that's what makes up the more legitimate pieces of news, which do matter and they do move the market and they are worth paying attention to. Now, that's on one side. And now we're going to go on to the other side and describe, you know, what... <laughs> What is all this bullshit that we see purported as news, which is typically very misleading, at the, <laughs> to put it lightly? And what I'm referring to now is like when you hear an announcement or perhaps an announcement of an announcement in the case of some particular uh, cryptocurrencies, but basically... You hear all, you know, when you go on to insert, you know, forum here, insert social media venue here, people will be talking about, guys, we have big news coming. There's big news coming. There's going to be a conference and this is going to change the game. This thing's going up and onwards from here and it's never going lower. Well, that's where I really start to diverge and say, hey, this is where we cut the line of what matters and what does not matter. And let's just kind of discuss why we think that works to begin with. Why is this so intuitively seductive. And that's exactly actually the first reason why. It's intuitive. You think it matters. We are conditioned to think that these sorts of things are, you know, powerful factors in the force. Sorry, powerful, powerful factors in the market, which when it comes down to it, they aren't really that important because these things are less tangible. And when they're less tangible, they're less actionable. And of course, when we're talking about an, uh, especially an unregulated market in the, in the, you know, in the sense of cryptocurrencies and, and, and in the regulated markets to a lesser extent, uh, trading with insider information is actually not illegal. <laughs> in cryptocurrencies. In traditional markets, very legal. Although I would imagine it's a pretty hard thing to stop. And when it comes down to it, if you're running off the news, you're going to be the last person to know. That team, that cryptocurrency, whatever it might be, even if it is a legitimate piece of news, they have already taken action. Everyone who knows within that realm, they probably told their friends as well, as people typically do. And they're taking action. Then maybe their friends tell their friends and they take action. You know, it goes, it goes down the road. So by the time that the average retail investor hears this news, it is already played out already it's it's already priced in and not only is it only is, is it already priced in but it's probably you know moving in the opposite direction as we'll look at some examples in just a little bit um, another big reason why we think news works is we don't want to take responsibility as human beings and this comes down to a psychological factor with regards to not accepting that we can be wrong so if we do hear a piece of news and then we take an action on it like let's say uh, ripple is gonna have we, we see that ripples gonna have an announcement and you know everyone starts talking it's gonna be a partnership with Google or it's gonna be a partnership with Facebook or whatever it might be you know again I'm just I'm just talking shit here it's not I'm not saying that that's happening um, but uh, it's very seductive as a human to follow that news because now it's not 
really your fault, or at least it's not really what you feel like is your fault, which is more important, which does not harm your ego. So when you go off of news saying that something's going to have a bullish event or what's to be interpreted as bullish as a bullish event, we intrinsically like that because if it's wrong, then it's not us being wrong. It's the news being wrong and we can blame it on something else. And that makes us, that kind of protects our ego. It makes us feel better without taking responsibility. Now, of course, at the end of the day, is that rational? Fuck no, it's not. You're the one losing the money. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you better take responsibility no matter which way, because I mean, assuming that you, you know, you, you like your account balance going up, uh, you know, it's, that's, that's going to be the more actionable type thing. That's going to be the more tangible thing. And of course, with taking responsibility, you actually put yourself in a position to, you know, make moves, even if it does go, you know, go, uh, go in the opposite direction. So all these things are coming together, right? We do not want to be taking responsibility. And then also intuitively, we think it matters. So those two, those two kind of forces working against each other or, or actually kind of with each other in a way make it a very seductive process to lean into the news and learn from it. And of course, we are also conditioned to respond to authority. So, you know, when we're growing up, we, we you know, we're, we're in a classroom, there's a teacher, you have to raise your hand to be called on, blah, 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 blah. They give out the information, you take the information, and then you regurgitate the information, and then you get graded on that. Well, if in the course, in the case of, you know, more adult life, when you're getting the information from, you know, insert news source here, whether it's on the internet, whether it's, you know, word of mouth, whether it's from, you know, some, some guy on CNN, wearing a suit and tie, we are conditioned to, from a young age, to kind of respond to that sort of a thing as an authority figure, knowing what's best. And when they know what's best, well, we better do it because we're going to get graded on it. And, uh, and that sort of, you know, and that, you know, perpetuates it as well. Of course, this doesn't apply to everyone. You know, some people uh, perhaps have moved past that, but I'd say at a base level, we all kind of have some sort of conditioning in that way, uh, especially in the Western world. I can't speak specifically to the Eastern world as, uh, well, I don't, really, <laughs> I don't really have too much experience myself, but I can say that with the Western world, that we are kind of conditioned in that way to look at that authority figure, giving out the news, and then making action on that because that is, quote unquote, the right thing to do. Okay. All right, so let me just make sure I go over my notes and get everything everything right here. Uh, yes, so why we think it works, it's intuitive. Uh, we don't want to take responsibility, so we're passing off responsibility by taking the news and then acting on that, and then we can blame someone else without making ourselves feel bad. And then, of course, we're conditioned to respond to that authority, so we think that they're right to begin with. Okay, great. So here's why it does not matter. Now let's get into the, the actual nitty-gritty of this video. And uh, for this, I'm going to have us teleport into the live scene right now because we will be going over some examples let me just go over to a fuller chart there we go bitcoin actually getting the pullback that we spoke about in this uh, morning's video and let me just bring this up okay great okay so first things first why is news a fool's errand okay this is perhaps the most important point of this and that is because interpretation of news or anything is subjective to the person itself so just at the most base sense if you are the person giving out the news, you can only give out the news. You can't control how it's interpreted. Someone with different life experiences might interpret the same piece of news completely different than another person who gets the exact sort, same sort of news. So you can think of, I'm sure that you can think of a million examples, but when it comes down to it, these sorts of subjective interpretations make it impossible to even make a, a quote-unquote right action off of that news to begin with. There's no right answer is my point it, because how can there be? We all are coming from different, you know, subjective realities, which means our interpretations are going to be subjective as well. So, you know, I might hear a piece of news saying... Um saying Finex, uh, Bifinex is, is insolvent, which is coming up all, all, all sorts of uh, crazy things right now. Um, and then some, and someone else could hear the same news. And for me, I say, okay, well, what does that mean? If Finex is insolvent, well, you'd assume that that would be a bad thing, right? But what if it's a good thing? What, I mean, what, you know, <laughs> what if it's a good thing for price, more importantly? Because if, the, you know, if, if they're going to run it up, they have control of Tether, maybe they do some crazy stuff. Maybe they, maybe they take action off that saying, okay, well, now we're found out, so let's just let's just let's just let's just let's just run a scam pump and uh and, and pump this to high heaven and then get out and hopefully evade all authorities um now someone else might hear that and prob probably the more likely interpretation is going to be oh this is really bad they short immediately but hey you know how has that been working out recently not too well of course okay so again big big piece on this one so uh, interpretation is subjective we cannot hey what's that what's going on right here oh did i just get a 
Oh, just got a little bit of an alert. Um, so yes, interpretation is subjective. You can't control how, how people are going to react to a piece of information. Everyone's coming from different backgrounds, so they will naturally interpret things differently. So the news can't be interpreted right is what I'm saying. It, it can't be done. Um, okay, the next one is many times the quote unquote news is set up to mislead. There's a great video. I can't link it because I'm afraid that I'm going to get like some sort of copyright strike. Uh, but there's a great video. If you type in your YouTube, type in Jim Cramer, do nothing remotely honest. And this is a, an, an amazing legendary video where Jim Cramer himself, the guy on, you know, on, on CNBC who has his own show, Mad Money, explains before the era of YouTube. He, I guess he didn't even know that like you could record things and put them on the internet webs. But he was ex essentially ex explaining how you know, major hedge funds would kind of, uh, in a way, manipulate the news, making them think that uh, something might be going on so that they can get their positions filled in a different way, that sort of that sort of thing. So, you know, when we do come into that news event, right, a lot of the time, what typically happens is people will get all riled up having expectations, but expectations can only be failed, actually. That's the really tricky thing about having expectations. They can either be met or they can fail. If they fail, then the op then likely the opposite reaction with price action happens. If they get met, well, then your expectations were met. So what happens now? We ran all the way up. Well, I guess just get just just let go of your stuff, right? Oh, that's what happens a lot of the time. So that's that's why a lot of the times when you see like a good earnings report, um, it'll a stock will you know it'll rally up into it, but then it'll actually sell off the next day. And if you're in the stock market, you can you can definitely confirm that. Okay. Um, let's see. The The next big one, the next big point is you are going to be the last person to know if you're paying attention to the news. Remember, if you're getting the news, especially in an unregulated, uh, unregulated market like cryptocurrencies and even to an extent in a regulated market like, um, like uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, the traditional market. You're going to be the last person to know if you're getting that news from some sort of official source. Why? Well, in the, especially in the case of cryptocurrencies, that person who was giving out the news, they weren't the first to know. The first to know was the people actually involved in the, uh, you know, in the process. So that would be the company or the cryptocurrency, the team, whatever it might be, the, those people at hand. They're going, to make, they're going to be making decisions on it because, well, especially in cryptocurrency land, there's no such thing as insider trading. So, <laughs> so... Are they just going to keep it to themselves? Probably they're going to tell like maybe the, maybe their family. Maybe they tell someone else. And that just creates a ripple effect, right? As all of those actions spread out, those sorts of events put themselves into the charts before the news piece is even released. The news, the news piece is, is not going to be released like, you know, usually anytime soon. It's not like the second that, you know, news reporter A hears the news, quote, the quote unquote news is just going to stop everything that he's doing and go report it without telling anyone else. I mean, first things first, he's got to get the information from someone else. So someone else to fucking tell him. Right. And uh, and that creates, you know, a whole sort of telephone loop. So by the time that the news actually comes out, the ripple effect has already taken place. Not to be confused with ripple, the cryptocurrency, but you know what I mean? So when it comes down to it. My point is, is that if you're paying attention to the news, you're going to be in a long line, a very long line where things have likely already, you know, transpired. That's why I believe that using tentacles is actually a little bit more important because you should be able to decipher what's going to happen in the news more often than not, not always, but decipher what's going to happen in the news just based off of what the chart looks like. There's a great saying that goes like this, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. And we can, uh, we can go into an example with Bitcoin right now, actually. Um, we had during, 20, uh, during the whole 2018, Bitcoin was making one massive descending triangle, a very bearish formation right over here. And then what happens right over here, the news comes out that there's some sort of hash war uh, between um, BSV and BAB or whatever it is the the bitcoin caches or whatever or, or whatever so they play out a hash war and then we break down now what came first this year's long worth of lower highs and lower lows aka downtrend or the news which happened like somewhere over here you already know the answer right you can make the decision for yourself that's my point now let's go over another thing so if sorry it, let's let's actually finish this point up a little bit more if you're going to be the last person to know 
that also means that you quite literally have to see the news, quote unquote, the news, the second that it comes out. Because we live in an, we live in an age where information is readily available. So, so if someone else gets it before you, it's like, where's your edge? Do you have any edge? If you don't have an edge, it's very difficult to make trading decisions based upon that now, isn't it? Okay. Um, the next big thing, kind of on to that point. If you are going to pay attention to the news, how are you going to manage that trade? Because if we are talking about a specific edge and you are going off this edge of quote unquote news, well, there's two proponents of it that make it a, 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 a worthwhile endeavor. You have to have one, the reward, which is going to be the news. So how do we even decipher what the reward is? How do you come up with a target just based off the news? And then two... How do you know when to manage risk? How do you know that? How do you know when that trade is going to be wrong? So this actually just goes back into the you know into the points of why we th like why it's, it's very difficult to make it work. How are you going to decide if you are to take a trade on that news that you're wrong? Because it could be that you're wrong. It, it al it's always a possibility, right? There's variability in this game, so it's a terrible trading regimen to be paying attention to something like that because you're going to hold on to a position that is going against you because you're going to keep on reinforcing yourself with the news said this, the news said this, the news said that. And all the while, price action is running up your fucking asshole, which not very comfortable when, uh, when, when your P&L starts turning red. So you need to have an actionable type area that, is, that not just defines your edge, but also your risk management. Those two factors can come together if you can if you can directly define those and you can actually come up with a longer term price plan but with regards to the way that that's just kind of set up naturally not so much not so much i would imagine that in the case of the news how are you going to decide a price target if the news comes out right now for each and every second that it ticks onwards and upwards i mean we're just we're wasting time with with figuring this out cuz other people are taking action but how do you decide where your target's going to be if someone come, if Donald Trump came out right now and said uh, we're going to make bitcoin we're done with the dollar shitcoin we're we're making bitcoin the national currency that would likely be some pretty damn bullish news to be fair that would also be a fundamentally changing thing as well so even in the case of legitimate news how do you decide where your target's going to be on top of that Maybe it's a dollar higher, probably not a dollar higher, but, but you see my point. This is a very tricky conversation because where are we getting into? Where are we getting into? You know, it has to be actionable and it, just deciphering what that target would be is going to be very, extremely difficult based upon that. On top of that, of course, how do you know when your idea, when your trade idea is going to be wrong? Well, there you go. Uh, again, very, 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 very difficult to actually manage. So long-term success is going to be extremely difficult with that sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, an outlook with, with trading style. Um, okay, another big one. Timing. Of course, we, we'll, we'll, we've already kind of spoken about this a little bit, but timing of this trade remember, you're not going to be the first to know unless if you are actually the insider yourself or you're friends with the insider, even then, you know, you're still going to be somewhere down the line. And how do you time this sort of a thing? Well, I'd say if you're just going solely off news, that's going to be very difficult. Um, you know, it's like when, when does this become actionable, right? And now let's go through some, I think that this is going to be best purported with some examples. So I'd love to talk about an example right here. You probably remember it. It's good old Mountain Gox, right? Mountain Gox, the, the, the exchange that pretty much did all Bitcoin transactions, um, or, or most of Bitcoin, uh, you know, was, was doing most of the Bitcoin trading in 2014, basically went belly up, but went, went bankrupt. And you can see right here, this was in February, 2014. This is from Wikipedia. So it's a very trusted site, but it, <laughs> It was twenty four. It was February twenty fourteen. So they they suspended they suspended trading right then. Closed this website and exchange service and filed for bank bankruptcy protection. All right, great. Let's go back in the charts because everyone talks about the reason for twenty fourteen happening. The the bear market of 2014, 2015 is because of Mountain Gox. So let's go back in the charts and see what that really was really like. And uh, we can we can zoom on it right over here, and you can see where was February twenty fourteen. February twenty fourteen was actually right here right here. Remember that saying, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. Look at this. Bitcoin had already gone sky high, put in a parabolic blow off top right over here and was already breaking down pretty heftily. This is when the Mountain Gox news came out right here. We actually bounced on top of that. 
we bounced. <laughs> you fucking bounced the next day. So if you, were to, if you were listening to that news and you said, oh shit, I got to get short. Well, liquidated the next <laughs> liquidated within a week right now of course over time this actually did play out but understand that the charts were telling you this much much in advance i mean you can you can be using all sorts of uh, technical tools to kind of figure that one out but just going on over here you could say very easily we have bearish divergence at the top uh on, you know on your rsi also we have we have weekly stokes turning down right over here in november of the prior year february was right over here right this was this was well far away um you know we can go onwards and onwards of course uh, weekly jewel also giving a sell signal as well uh, about a couple a few months beforehand so these sorts of things likely show themselves in the chart why because Mt. Gox knows that they're that they're going to go bankrupt. So what are they doing? They're making decisions based off that. They're already making decisions based off that. And then you know we actually do play it out overall. But uh, but understand that actually trading this news, this quote unquote news, extremely difficult. I mean, even if you short right here on the next on the next big bounce up, well, you might make some money for a little bit of time, but right back above your entry, not too not too long after. So again, it's where do you manage risk on something like that? And and then if you know if you say okay, well, we already played it out right over here, well, then you got to explain this if you're going to be going with that sort of paradigm, right? Let's go over another piece of news. Let's go over um, let's go over let's go over the SEC claims that Bitcoin is not a security, right? This happened on April 27th of 2018. April 27th, 2018, the SEC chairman declares Bitcoin is not a security. That would be a big news piece, right? Bitcoin is not a security, which of no shit. Um, but my point is, is that this would be, quote unquote, interpreted extremely bullish by many people. And I know that a lot of people are interpreting this as bullish because, well, if you're anywhere on crypto Twitter or crypto Reddit or any of these social media venues, people were speaking about this like ad nauseum. Let's go look at what the price action looked like on April 27th of 2018. Let's just zoom on over here to our more recent times. Where was April 27? Right here, literally at the top of this rally. If you would have bought that quote unquote bullish news, remember that interpretation is subjective, but I'm just going to make the interpretation here that that, you know, is <laughs> probably going to be interpreted by most as, uh, as bullish. But remember, we can't even control that. So that's, you know, that's a problem. Uh, well, let's see what happened. Let's buy some Bitcoin right here. Uh oh, down 40%. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? So there you go. It's in Bitcoin, you know, for, for, for a whole year, it hasn't even gotten above that area. So if you were to buy into that good news, really bad results, really fucking bad results. Let's go over another example. Let's actually just go over consensus, which is actually coming up right now, by the way. But I remember last year during consensus 2018, people were going crazy, right? They were saying consensus is right around the corner. Bitcoin's going to pump. They're going to release some news that there's some new there that there's that there's some new doings in Bitcoin land, and uh, this is going to save Bitcoin. Bear market's over, baby. You better stop shorting. You're going to be you're going to be crying if you're shorting from here. Well. This was May 14th to May to May 16th in on on 2018. Let's see what happened. Let's actually put it on a daily and go really deep on this one. Uh, this was May. Okay, so so here's your May 14 to May 16, right? So Bitcoin was already coming off of that 10,000 high. We dump, then we pump the few days leading up into this consensus. But look at this, and this is a great example of show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. What happens after this? Well, first things first, we're in an overall downtrend making lower highs and lower lows. All right, so that's already set up there, not, a, not just on a daily, but on a weekly time frame as well. Then we get the death cross right here, the green 55 and the purple 200 exponential moving average, death crossing right over here, right as that event happens. But consensus is supposed to save this bitch, right? Nope, wrong. And we move on down uh, to actually new lows for the year, about 35 and a quarter percent. So again, not the best uh, <laughs> news. It's a fickle bitch, now, isn't it? Let's go over another example. Perhaps, uh, perhaps some a little bit more, a um, little bit more tangible as it just recently happened. Uh, Cardano, right? Cardano had their conference. I remember a lot of people were saying this. Crown, you're going to be an idiot for saying that Cardano is going down because Cardano is having a conference, and these, this, these are the best ones because conferences mean fucking butt kiss even when they do make an announcement there it doesn't matter it's already priced in people are buying much beforehand um you know in anticipation just to be able to dump on the lesser uh the lesser educated uh, you know inhabitants of these markets but this one happening 
uh, in April 17, 2019. Remember, there's a lot of messages saying, Crown, you fucking moron. If you're going to be bearish on Cardano, you're an idiot because this one's going to have a conference. It's like, okay, that means very little. But let's go Let's go check it out on price action. Uh, Cardano over here, and we had, sorry, uh, when was it it again? Uh, this was... Um, Where's my date? Yeah, April tw April 17th, 2019. Okay, so we can go exactly to the day. April 17, right here, 2019. What's happening right over here? Well, we had just finished putting in another lower high and we're well on our way down. So you see this pump up into these sort of events and then they just dump right on afterwards. Why? Because big market movers know that if they create the illusion of bullishness by having a pump like this into a, into a, into what what is perceived as a big event, they can now dump on the less educated investors in this market because they have liquidity for them because people now look at this they say oh my god this thing's going to the moon this means this conference is going to be huge it's going to be rallying all the way all the way until the conference and then even after that it's like well actually it topped out well beforehand um and uh, now in danger of getting a death cross right over here. So again, you know, not only do we have that marker on the uh, on the daily, but on the weekly, we actually got rejected by the 50, putting in another lower high, bear, uh, hidden bearish divergence on the weekly uh, on the weekly RSI as well, and down. Not only that, but weekly Stokes headed down as well. So again, and that sorry, this happened on a early April, right over here, and hidden bearish divergence confirmed on late May, uh, sorry, late March, uh, 25th of March. So just another thing saying, hey, show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. This was unlikely to be good and, well, <laughs> vindication. Um, okay, what's another good one? Uh, this one's going to be a good one. Let's, let's go pick on Ripple for a second. Again, I don't have a strong opinion on Ripple. I'm not like a Ripple hater. I'm also not a Ripple lover. I'm just kind of neutral on it, but I do think it's quite funny. <laughs> I think it's quite funny to be quite honest. And uh, this is Swell, Swell of 2018, right? This is this is Ripple's big conference. They typically make big announcements. Uh, in 2017, they made an announcement that they're partnering with like Bill Gates or some shit. Um, we can, uh, I don't know the dates for that one. I think it was probably around the same, but we can go over both examples. And then this year was October 3rd uh, and Bill Clinton was a big keynote speaker. Let's go look at what that, sort of news did right let's go over here um ripple okay so i, I do want to check out the 2017 version first uh 2017 october i remember we were rallying up right over here rally 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 and then the, the event happens right here beginning of october uh-oh down baby and again just another how you know how much percent drop down 35 percent drop down but the news but bill clinton but 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 <laughs> you know again very difficult to trade something like that. Eventually, we did end up going onwards and upwards, but you know, if you're going to long right here, you have to sit through a 35% drop down. Only Brian Kelly can do something like that, man. Uh, and then more recently, we had October of 2018, right? What was happening in October of 2018? So we rally up into it, rally up into it. People are, you know, the big market movers are buying it up, creating that illusion of, of, of bullishness. They're going to announce something huge, guys. This one's massive. And October begins right here on this exact candle. We haven't, get, we haven't gotten higher since that date. This is this is even Bill Clinton now uh, do, do, uh, doing his duties. So before I think it was Bill Gates. Sorry, maybe I got it wrong. In 2017, is Bill Gates. They partnered up with Bill Gates. Um, in 2018, they had Bill Clinton speak. Um, and I remember in 2017, they actually had Ben Bernanke speak as well. And that was going to be seen as like a big deal. I don't even think he really knew what Ripple was. And of course, ever since then, Ripple's never even gone back up this area. And uh, clean 51% down over the course of. Uh, six seven or sorry like eight or nine months so uh even if you even if this thing does turn around it's like okay well how do you time something like this this is a disaster scenario if you were buying into the quote-unquote news so that's really one of what i wanted to get out during this video i'll go back on a bitcoin over here start to wrap it up and again to kind of to kind of separate the, the the two big things there are legitimate pieces of news these are fundamental economic events you know some like earnings reports some like economic data whether it be wages whether it be uh some sort of unemployment rates whether it be gdp whether it be um, some sort of a merger and, or, or acquisition whether it be uh did we talk about earnings or forwards outlooks um you know all these sorts of things they those do matter interest rates definitely matter <laughs> definitely definitely matter market will move on those what we want to focus on here is the news that sounds very sexy and seductive that we're conditioned to respond to from a very young age, especially in the Western world, as the authority figures give it out. Good news coming. We're going to have a big announcement. And 
Intuitively, you think that that's bullish. But remember, interpretation is subjective. We can't control that to begin with. So at a most base level, we can't even confirm that that's how everyone's going to interpret it. Second thing, second, well, a lot of the time, this is misleading, purported by, you know, uh, a lot of time either deliberately misleading by, by, uh, by the media, or perhaps deliberately misleading by the, by, by the company at hand. You know, in the case of Mountain Gox, they were saying that everything's fine, you know, about a week before, a couple of weeks before they actually went uh, insolvent and belly up. Um, and of course, you know, it's, it's <sighs> the big thing with that is there's going to be a lot of big market movers, people with extremely deep pockets. And I'll just lay it out right here. People with extremely deep pockets, they will run up the price before those events because they know that if they create the illusion of bullishness, there will be retailer buyers for their sales. <laughs> so they have liquidity to dump on. And that, you know, it's just a game, really. It doesn't even matter what the news is. Sorry, just hit the mic. I apologize about that. Um, but it doesn't matter what the news is because they're going to do that to, uh, regardless. They're just playing that pre-news pump uh, in, in most cases. Sometimes it's pre-news dump. Um, in the case of uh, more negatively interpreted news, but uh, you get my point. They're just gonna be using that as a catalyst, as an, as an excuse to get the retailers excited, to get them back in because they are less educated and they don't understand that these things typically don't matter. There's, there's, a, there's a clear divide between actual trading, buying and selling, and then the news in this sort of a sense. Remember, the only reason why price action ever moves ever is because there is an imbalance of buyers and sellers. Quote, quote, uh, quote Mark Douglas on that one, um, which is which is completely correct. You know, when you think about it, there's no other reason why price action would ever move ever. There's an imbalance of buyers and sellers. That's the only way that it can move. Then. There are the actual intricacies of trading news. How do you how do you define a target? How do you define risk management? Because those two things are very important. Otherwise, you're going to hold on to it. Just and, and and here's a really dangerous situation. You're going to hold on to that position. I, I think the Ripple position was like a beautiful example. And say, but it's going to turn around, right? I, the authority figure told me that this was good. Bill Gates or and, and Bill Burnett or, and uh, Bill Gates and uh, who else did I say? Bill Clinton are in on this too. They're 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 involved. They're in it. And um, and how can this be bad? I'm gonna hold on to this. But if you were of that opinion, you're gonna be holding on to it for forever. When do you make that divide? When do you say, hey, this isn't working out. It's time to let go. Then of course, the timing you know, of these things with trades, as you can see, a lot of the time. Show me the charts and I'll tell you the news. So that's going to do it for this psychological video. Don't get caught up in this. This is why I use technical analysis. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, it's an art, not a science. But God damn it, man. It's, <laughs> I, found that, I found out myself that it's a much better way than paying attention to the news. I, perhaps like you, intuitively thought at first that news matters, that it, that it really drives the market. But overall, this has been my experience. And I would say, <laughs> I'd say... More often than not, I do not care about what the news says. Do I, do, I, do I stay in tune with the news? Well, absolutely, just because you know it's fun to hear about these sorts of things. It probably matters for more long-term type stuff. But you know, ju just as an example, people have been talking about an ETF in Bitcoin. And I think an ETF is actually you know, extremely likely in the next uh, couple of years. But is that helping out the price right now? Well, you be the judge of that. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to do it for today. But an absolute pleasure to speak with you on this uh, lovely, lovely Saturday. And take care.